Welcome to Global Connections on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Today's show is about terrorism in Europe. Our guest for this show is Rupmati Kandakar, political analyst. So what are we talking about here today? We're talking about a whole bunch of things that come up in the context of examining terrorism in Europe. How much terrorism has been going on? Was the Crocus City City Hall uh, the first one? Don't forget Belgium. Uh, the airport in Belgium and Brussels. And there has been terrorism in France and in Spain, the train attack some years ago. Um, where is this happening around Europe? Who is doing it? Why are they doing it? Um, and we have a chart that is very interesting showing how much they are doing. How does it affect Europe in general? How does it affect the Middle East in general? How does it affect China one way or the other? How does it affect the US? And what does it mean for terrorism in the US who will stop this terrorism? And how will they do that? Or will it continue? Whoa, so many questions. Welcome to the show, Rupmati. Aloha, Jay, and thank you for having me on your show. It's my pleasure being here and talking about these dynamic things which are happening in our world right now. So many questions to answer. You know, what, what, what is happening? Why is this happening? I mean, uh, it, it, it kind of caught us by surprise that there was so much terrorism, including in Russia at Crocus Hall, and now more recently in Dagestan. Uh, let's talk about what's going on in Russia first, and we can move west. Yeah, Jay, you remember we had a show on the Moscow terror attacks, and we described how the ISIS Khorasan, uh, ISIS-K took responsibility for it. And, you know, it was a packed city hall on a, a evening, a weekend, and uh, they got a terror attack instead of a normal night out. So that's the kind of... Uh, terrorism that these terrorists want to spread, the fear that they thrive on. And uh, we, have ha we have done a show on the threat in America for this. And now this uh, European discussion comes into play because uh, the Germany's uh, intelligence agency, that is the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution, known as the BFV. Now, this is important because they have sent out a report that last week, as recent as last week, saying that an Islamist terror attack on German soil has increased substantially. Now, Jay, uh, the, uh, the agency leader, whose name is Thomas Haldenbach, said that the threat of an uh, attack is always there in Germany. But right now, because of the October 7 terror, terror attack on Israel and the counter uh, defense uh, mechanism that Israel uh, undertook, in Gaza, you know, there is uh, been a looming menace. And why in Europe? Because of the migration, because of the terror cells operating over there. Now, uh, Jay, this Islamic State uh, militant groups, um, what do you say? This ISIS and Al-Qaeda are the ones who thrive on publicity. Propaganda, worldwide publicity is what they target. And when they saw, they have a lot of ideological differences with Hamas. Uh, they're uh, like we have spoken about the Sia Shunni divide and so many things. But after they saw what kind of publicity or what kind of propaganda that they achieved, you know, it has become, uh, they want to jump into this. They want to share of it. So this, um, uh, this menace that looms over Europe is because of the terror cells. And these three, when they come together, um, that is the point where uh, Europe has to worry. Now, you spoke about the Belgium and the French uh, attack where two, three people you know, uh, were killed uh, because of the terror. This the Madrid bombing, which happened, uh, the train bombing, which brought European terrorist attacks in the forefront and now the Moscow one. So uh, these are events which can happen anywhere, anytime, suddenly. We have in Europe the classification of terrorism because after 9-11, uh, Europe established the terrorist list. As in that they uh, started putting up uh, lists of individuals, uh, terror units, uh, so that they could scrutinize them and have a better understanding of who's entering Europe. So uh, we have the categorization of terrorism as the EU, the EU does. It is jihadist terrorism. It is right-wing activity, left-wing activity, anarchist, violent extremism, ethno-nationalist, and separatist terrorist activity. So uh, in this, 
we see the most recent has been the jihadist terrorism. Because right now, the, the terrorism that takes place, like it or not, call it uh, Islamophobia, whatever, but it's in the name of religion. And one particular religion stands out because it's in conflict. Uh, and uh, I told you, no other religion in the world has a political roadmap. No other religion in the world talks of uh, establishing yourself pol uh, politically and, like you said, demographically. That is a very important uh, uh, point, Jay, because of which uh, the they can really control uh, economy. Jay. Sweden, Denmark, these countries have such uh, dwindling populations or such sparse populations. And in that, if you have an influx of migrants, like it or not, within five years, 10 years, it will be them over this, um, the natives. And what will take over? Their way of life. The Europeanness is gone. And when their way of life takes place, the indoctrination and the feeling of empathy towards what is happening to my brethren in a Middle East zone, for that, I will vent out my anger and frustration on a uh, demo, uh, where, where I live democratically elected, uh, you know, uh, a country where I enjoy freedoms and where, uh, where there are citizens who I can vent out my anger on, I will do that. You, you've uh, suggested that m most of this terrorism, at least on, on, on the left side of the equation, is uh, from um, Muslims, Muslim yes. countries, you know, activists from Muslim countries and so forth. But there are other terrorists too, right? Um, I, so how does that play? How much of this is happening from Muslim countries and terrorists and militants and so forth coming from the Middle East and North Africa? And how much of it is from others, maybe on the right wing side? Can you talk about that? Yeah, Jay, um, the right wing terrorism uh, activity, you know, they are uh, targeted or they are, uh, you know, they're limited. If there is no network or there is no terror financing that takes place. There are no gangs which have bases as far as America to Africa to Middle East to Southeast Asia. That network, the right wing European unit will not have its base in Africa. Let's, let's be right. They will be in a locality. They will be in a building. They will be in a city or maybe, you know, five, five countries, not all over the world. And you know what is scary about uh, the heightened terrorism uh, risk alert that is issued by France, Belgium, Austria, Slovenia, and Bosnia, Herzegovina have raised it to very high levels right now. Because these people have collaborated. They, are, have the, uh, they have the potential to collaborate and come together. So see, individually, they're such a force. When you talk about the networks, you know, mm -hmm. I mentioned before that I had trouble seeing a benefit in doing terrorism in Europe. But in fact, uh, these organizations, if they're part of a network, uh, for example, connected with Iran, uh, which is a rogue state and would encourage terrorism, would encourage chaos, um, then, you know, their attacks, the attacks of these terrorists in Europe may be um, uh, a, 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 a selling point to Iran uh, to give them money. Uh, mm -hmm. So they may you know, do a, an attack like Crocus in Russia um, or elsewhere in Europe, Western Europe, and then turn around to Iran and say, look, we're really active here. How about some money so we can achieve your agenda of, of um, you know, creating chaos in these countries? Uh, so I think it, it's more complicated than it seems. But what I don't understand is why ISIS-K... It sounds like a breakfast cereal, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> why why ISIS-K is attacking in Russia, you know, in Crocus and then in Dagestan a few days ago. Um, why are they attacking Russia? Russia is a, is a chaos state. Um, Russia would love to see terrorism in Western Europe, but not at home. Why, why is this going on in Russia? CJ, um, Russia, because of, uh, you know, their own policies and, you know, you know, Russia is a kind of uh, state which has uh, given, um, you know, they have antagonized these 
places because of their thorough orthodox uh, values and you know their authoritarianism that they bring in you know as soon as the crocker city hall attack happened uh, concert hall uh, attack happened russia because of the authority that the state exercises they have just thrown out all the migrants without any um, uh, you know vetting there is no pity on the uh, you know cleaning up uh, mechanism that they undertook but the problem is that russia can take these measures but can a european country do this that is the fear that we harbor to. and uh, the the risk that that uh, these attacks will bring in that they will implode and they will uh, you know they will flare up the other terror cells when netanyahu spoke of the terror cells he was not joking and uh, jb saw very uh, a crazy situation wherein when when they had bounty full of hostages they were selling the hostages to lebanese hezbollah and you know hamas was so this kind of uh this collaboration that i talk about is dangerous and in europe because the countries are so well connected and democratic countries and advantages of a well developed uh, uh, nation state system that the militants have they use it to their advantage i was going to put this question to you yeah. and so this happens in europe including russia um and the people in the middle east um, you know activists or would be activists see this happening they see this death destruction and, and terror chaos happening in europe um and and they are looking um some of them would love to come to europe um but they don't have a pathway there it seems to me that when an incipient terrorist or terror organization in the middle east or north africa they see what's happening in terrorism in europe they say hmm this sounds like a worthy adventure for us uh why don't we join up or at least why don't we respect what they're doing support what they're doing because they're doing it for us um we're in the same network and therefore you have um something that encourages uh, would be terrorists or full blown terrorists in um the middle east north africa to get on board about more terrorism in europe what do you think about that yeah jay you are so right about this see um in any 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 organization when you have a aim and you go for it uh, it's a different thing but when islam has a uh, is a islamic jihadist or islamic terrorist terrorist have a focus of islam versus non islam it becomes them versus the other world you know what i'm talking of it's a varied dimension that they have a right wing activist will have just an ideological difference but that uh, the span will be not beyond one event or beyond one you know the uh, ireland ireland issue was regarding one point or one issue it is never that if something happens some other part of the world i will have to get affected and i will have to get into um you know action and russia um is was such a strong country and it had to face this so it it should scare everybody jay and it doesn't scare everybody enough well, the next question i was going to ask you is if there is a terror attack say in belgium say at the airport as as happened um in various other places uh how do people in that country and more to the point in the neighboring countries react to that they must they must also be terrified because they say this is at random this happened in belgium but it could happen here um this happened in one place in europe but it could happen any place in europe and so you get a secondary terror effect and and that is and you know and that's what the terrorists want um a secondary terror terror effect all over europe all over europe and so um you know this this creates the kind of chaos that goes beyond the airport in belgium or or the country of belgium or the you know the, those countries around belgium it goes all over europe my right yeah j see now the brussels airport is such a nice place to just go and have a coffee or you know have you know just spend some time but right now you can 
they, that attack changed everything. After a terrorist attack, every every government used to say, previously, before 9-11, they used to say, bring back things as quickly to normal as possible. Bring back things, uh, uh, forget what happened yesterday and carry on with life. But after 9-11, Jay, the intensity of the uh, terror attacks has increased to such an extent that your daily life does get affected. And uh, after 9-11, we saw airports uh, changing. We saw our railway stations changing, our metro subways changing. You know, you have uh, so many different, uh, you really, how many times we have seen uh, people go up to cops and say, I suspect uh, this is, uh, you know, a suspicious uh, activity. This is a suspicious individual. That fear has come in after 9-11. And really before that, there were pockets of terror attacks. But as soon as this networking has come in and social propaganda, Jay, that has just exploded the uh, the reach that these uh, units can have. Any kind of, you want to spread a hashtag, you it can trend uh, so quickly in a matter of seconds. The same way agendas can trend, in the same way your radicalization can trend. Uh, and, um, you know, the terror uh, will get stronger and stronger because of the very means of advanced communication that we we are using to advance societies. They're taking it back to cringe the society back into, you know, implode the society. It's interesting. You talk about 9-11 and yeah. for, you know, some years after 9-11, with, with some residual effect that will never, never end, um, people were terrified uh, about the possibility of another terror attack in the United States on U.S. soil. But, you know, that is, uh, what, 20, 20, more than 20 years ago. And I think a lot of people have, have forgotten the terror. Mm -hmm. Generations have passed, and they have, they're, not, they're not thinking about it so much anymore. Um, and uh, they, they, it, at some point in their way of looking at, at this, they have decided it won't happen again. Um, but, of course, we know better. And, the, and, the, and the, the same kind of complacency exists with respect to the American view of the terror attacks in Europe. I think a lot of Americans in this country have, are completely complacent about the terror attacks in Europe. They say, hmm, that's Europe. That's not here. Uh, that's the Europeans' problem. It's not our problem. Uh, it won't happen here. It happens there. Um, and, and I think that kind of complacency is really foolish because it could happen here any day. And these same terror groups are trying to make it happen here. Your thoughts about that? Uh, you're so absolutely point on, Jay, in this. Uh, it is, I'll give you an example of this, uh, the India uh, terrorist attack that happened on 26, uh, uh, 2011. That was, uh, Jay, they targeted Jewish synagogue. In Pune, my hometown, uh, they targeted the German bakery in front of the Jewish synagogue. So they have come all the way across to India, a heavily populated country, and targeted Jewish uh, synagogues. Uh, the, the Moshe uh, incident, in, Moshe incident, J. So um, all these things that you can have globalization of terrorism. Some cause which is happening miles away, and you find an easy target in a crowded place say in New York or say in Bombay or say in uh, say Mumbai or say in uh, London and you go for it, that is what is the uh, fear that is coming to you? You talk about the future and, you know, uh, you talk about a network and the network networks get stronger. The networks use command and control systems that take advantage of modern technology, including social media. Um, the networks use weapons. Um, including bombs, uh, possibly poisons, uh, poison gas, and so forth, um, that really weren't available to them before. And so uh, there's a great likelihood that this will increase, as you say, Rupati, on a, on a worldwide basis. And so the question I put to you about that is, what has Europe done about it? What has Russia? Russia caught somebody right after the Crocus attack. I, I don't know what they did with them, but it wasn't pretty. Um, what about Europe? Europe is, uh, you know, more democratic, and there are, you know, First Amendment and 
and um, civil rights available to, to people who they catch in Europe. But what can they do? What have they done to prevent recurrence of this? And how strong is the U.S. in terms of using anti-terror attack uh, kind of technology and systems to prevent it from happening here? I mean, to me, I see um, both of these competing um, competing changes as affecting, A, the increase in global terrorism, and B, the efforts of the nation states uh, to stop them. Um, but it's not clear where this is going because your chart shows there are more of them all the time. Um, yeah. So what can, what what can they do? What have they done? What will they do in Europe and the U.S. to prevent recurrence, prevent an expansion of these terror attacks? Jay, around like say, take a number, and you have fifteen hundred and uh, one thousand five hundred and sixty arrests made. Just in between two years, 2019 to 2021, when there was not so much of a terror activity in the world. Right now, after 2023, there has to be a heightened uh, level of uh, alertness and more arrests will be made. More people will go on the suspicious uh, list. You know, you will have uh, organizations being blacklisted in the terror funding networks. There's a terror funding uh, uh, network which uh, list that they have. And they try to block the funds that come into this. Like you said, they ask for money or whatever that they will try to block. But um, you see, Jay, there was uh, we had discussed this earlier that they changed the name of the organization. It, it, ISIS will be made into ISIS K, then ISIS L. Uh, they will change the name for the sake of getting out of the blacklist. And uh, uh, Jay, terror funding is a big, big, big issue because the rational and the sheer quantity behind the funding is massive, Jay, which, which uh, businesses fund uh, these terror uh, units is unknown, which, uh, like you said, the share market, they know that tomorrow there's going to be a terror attack. The buy, sell, you know, that is also a part of the funding, the crypto, you know, so many things which is unaccountable, unregulated um, uh, currency, and it helps them. So, um, the U.S. and the uh, and Europe and any 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 democratic society which is um, which is liberal in its outlook, which is uh, accommodating in its outlook, not only a democratic even a dictatorship which is accommodating its outlook, has to be wary of these elements which come in and do not assimilate it. when they try to uh, dominate and. Uh, bring themselves out and these terror units, it's difficult. And the only way out is citizen vigilance. You know, you have increased security. The funding will go up on security. There will be un, um, unbashed, um, what do you say? Uh, there will be unbashed uh, expression of your viewpoints. There will be no uh, sugar coating of your uh, views. You know, it will be... a uh, Black and white differentiation between government policies which will come in. What I hear you saying, Rupmati, um, is that people, when they get terrified uh, with attacks that take place in their country or nearby or anywhere in, in Europe, they, they take steps. The right wing takes its steps and government takes its steps. Um, and, and part of this has to do with migration and immigration. It kind of started with that in a funny way, or it expanded with that a few years ago. Um, and so um, I suspect that there will be limits on immigration. And we have that in this country, too. You know, Trump says all, all the bad people coming into this country, and he's lying about it, but all the bad people coming into this country, they're all, they're all criminals and rapists and whatnot. Um, but that's what feeds the terror. It makes people more afraid. It makes people want to close the borders. It changes the way the world works. And, and I think that's probably happening or will happen in Europe, because just like you and me, they can assume that terrorism will continue uh, for a long time and arguably will get worse. But one, one thing that troubles me um, in this conversation is that it seems to me that a lot of the terror comes from the Middle East. And North Africa. And, and the question I put to you about that is, 
how how does it affect the war in the Middle East? Uh, the war, let put it simply, between Iran and Israel, including you know all its proxies, its terror proxies. There must be a connection here, Rupati, that you have all this terror going on with ISIS K and the like, um, and these organizations that are fed by, supported by Iran, and Iran's mm, mischief uh, in the in the Middle East. It's, it's an open border. It's porous. And people come from the Middle East into Europe and they bring these militant notions with them. So there must be a, a two-way street, a connection between one and the other. And somehow, well, I'm asking you, is there a two-way street on this? And how does it affect you know, the Middle East and Iran uh, when we see a terror attack in Europe? For Jay, for them, more doors get closed. Uh, very rightfully said, more doors get closed. Now we are we have had this discussion because the B B B F R uh, we said that migrants from ISIS K unit which attacked Russia have moved into Europe in the guise of migrants. Uh, so this was the connection that took place, and uh, Russia was active in Afghanistan. So ISIS had this propaganda thing coming up. You know, see the linkages coming in. They wanted to bring themselves out. They had the city attack. Now they have moved into Europe. They will come up with this. The Middle East conflict, it just rages on because, uh, Jay, these terror units, uh, um, the funding which Iran gives is massive, Jay. And uh, uh, we know that because Iran can never come in front. They always play a puppet uh, uh, puppet politics in Middle East and uh, that is where um, they become a rogue state. Now, why they were classified as a rogue state without uh, the US dealing with them for 25 years? Because of these underhand tactics, because of these backdoor uh, policies that they make to fund terrorism, to, you know, uh, to give Hezbollah the power that they need. The And J rogue states are not classified rogue just on the basis of uh, some malicious activity. There is a lot of degree of um, uh, uh, what do you say? They have a venom in their policies uh, against another country. So that that works Jay, for them. And the, the two way street that you talk about is difficult. Jay. One thing that strikes me: you mentioned nine eleven, yes. and we know that after nine eleven, uh, George W. Bush was interested in. Um, cutting back on civil rights, he was going to find these terrorists. Um, and so he um, he supported the Patriot Act and all that black, black box kind of uh, surveillance that we have seen since then, which still exists um, and, and probably is much more sophisticated now. Uh, and what it means at the end of the day is that our right of privacy, our right not to be surveilled by the government has declined, you know, as it has terribly in China. Um, China must be pleased to see that its system um, works like the American system is, you know, is moving toward um, a surveillance about every electronic communication. And so um, what I get is that Iran uh, whoever funds these terror organizations is looking to create chaos, including in the U.S. Um, and in a, in a way, it has achieved chaos, if by no other effect uh, than by reducing our civil rights, by reducing our privacy, um, by including mm -hmm. the Patriot Act. There are a number of them, um, and 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 the surveillance that goes on, the black boxes that surveil our phone calls, our emails, and so forth. And so, in in a, in a way, democratic countries are the are the targets uh, in general. It's not only that people are afraid, but that governments are afraid, and they and they undermine basic democratic rule of law, civil rights in the process. What are your thoughts about that? You're you're right about this, Jay. Civil liberties, the draconian, like they call it, the draconian uh, laws that the governments bring in is to prevent the. Uh, you know, when any terror attack happens, any government suffers in so many ways other than just loss of uh, citizens. Uh, 
they suffer recession they suffer you know uh, their uh, you know the image in the global scenario changes jay uh, all these things have to again be rectified and for that you kind of implode you close your national doors where you have authority you exercise it and uh, like you said the civil liberties reduce and citizen vigilance has to increase that is a voluntary process now when that doesn't happen voluntarily uh, it's always let it happen if it's not my business why should i bother that is the kind of attitude that every person has and that doesn't work in when you're tackling terrorism because terrorism can happen anywhere citizen vigilance has to be 100% and around you surrounding you that community feeling jay we have spoken about it from day one that community feeling when it comes in then you can stand up to a terrorist and uh, jay we have seen the stabbing or, or the shooting that takes place there are a couple of guys or you know 10 people maximum who go and do this the plane uh, where uh, was which was hijacked over the pentagon people in the seat got up together stood together and caught hold of the hijacker brought the plane down but preferred the plane coming down rather than going and attacking an establishment so to put yourself uh, you know put the nation first will come in so many times when we are dealing with terror attacks in the future jay because as the boundaries have diluted people are all over this distinction of who is who has reduced because it can be a german citizen who is standing in front of you and carrying out a terrorist attack it doesn't my uh, the roots will not matter i think we would be remiss if we did not examine uh the differentiation between an administration under uh Joe Biden starting next year uh and an administration under Donald Trump starting next year um so here we have a global what amounts to a global problem uh, a problem that terrifies people a problem that seeks to create chaos and can more even more easily do it these days um what kind of what kind of role does this particular phenomenon play in an administration under Biden versus an administration under Trump i know that's a hard question but let's see what you can do with it biden j uh, made few follies which uh, cost, will which will cost him very dear because you see uncontrolled immigration always hurts uh, communities and person people because Uh, Jay, there's. I, I'll show you on the uh, social media. There's a TikTok video made by the Chinese to show which borders are easy to cross and how you can jump into the US. So, uh, a TikTok video showing how you can walk into US is different from you standing for a visa process and going through, you know, scrutiny from the uh, bureau and then entering US uh, legitimately. So, uh, this main folly uh, on migration was a big, big. Um, stoppage and we saw when trump was criticized in his tenure when he was criticized for having you know targeted uh, islamic pol- uh, anti islam policies when he didn't allow islamic students to come or uh, students uh, people from this con- particular countries to enter us he was branded as you know draconian but um, he has those kind of policies and right now it's from uh, what do you say lesser of two evils we have to choose about if it. it's about migration because both of them do not have concrete migration policies jay and the reason is not them both it is about how our society functions it's a democratic society it's about human rights it's about personal liberty it's about my right to travel it's my about my right to enter a country uh, uh, for safety you know all these things come into play these are just two presidents during their own tenures but our democratic societies are the ones that are going to be targeted in this entire game of terrorism jay it is so evident in every terrorist it doesn't happen in any other place it happens in uh societies where you have civil liberties where you have a, a right to good uh, a good life you disturb it. that is terrorism yeah. thank you so much rupali kandakar our political analyst And thanks so much to our viewers for joining us on Global Connections. I'm your host Jay Pidel. We'll see you again soon here on Think Tech. Aloha, Rupmati.
Aloha, Ajay. Thank you very much.